Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can download our OneSpot Media app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the word Spot Media. Latest police data show St. James, which is under a, public, a state of public emergency, has recorded 12 murders since last month. The Jamaica Constabulary Force Periodic Serious and Violent Crimes Review also shows there have been 21 reported shootings in the parish despite the increased presence of the police and the military. For the entire country, the review shows that 141 persons were murdered in Jamaica for the month of January. There were 15 cases of homicide within the first three days of that month. Between January 1 and February 3, 156 persons were killed in Jamaica. That's 24 more murders when compared to the corresponding period in 2017. The police high command has been giving special attention to Clarendon, which rec recorded 18 murders, the St. Catherine North Division, 22, and St. Andrew South, 15. Three children have been murdered since the start of 2018. In the wake of growing concerns that the wrong signal could be sent to the overseas tourism market, the National Security Minister, Robert Montague, has called for an end to the use of the term state of emergency when referring to St. James. He made the call yesterday during a meeting with stakeholders in the parish. After this afternoon, we will no longer refer in St. James to the state of emergency. We will refer to it as enhanced security measures. But was this change necessary? And the state of emergency has a negative connotation overseas. And therefore, <laughs> we would like to refer from henceforth to enhance security measures in St. James. The state of emergency, which was declared on January 18, was last week extended to May 2. And the National Security Minister has announced plans to bolster the number of police officers within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. This as the need for additional manpower becomes more urgent. Minister Montague says the government is looking to employ at least 3,000 additional police officers within the next two to three years. He says provisions are also being made to locate additional space in, to facilitate training. TVJ's Shamela Mitchell reports. The Jamaica Constabulary Force currently has 11,450 members. However, National Security Minister Robert Montague says there are 14,000 established vacancies within the JCF, which is why the National Security Ministry is now looking at space to train more lawmen. So we have put in 100 additional space at Harman Barracks. We're putting in 200 additional space at National Police College, and we have an MOU with the university to train 300 per batch, and each place will train two batches per year. So we, our capacity now, I believe, is at 1,500 to be able to train 1,500. Minister Montague says this is likely to happen within two to three years. He says at least 3,000 police officers will be employed. In addition, the National Security Minister says JCF members will be able to enhance their education through continuous training. We are making the move to upgrade the National Police College by having it accredited with it by the University Council so that the college and the courses, when you finish training, you will be given university credits. And over time, a police officer can serve and do his upgrades and get his first degree. And because we already have a master's program paid for by the ministry at the University of the West Indies. He says the ministry is also looking to expand the training options available. At present, they are now negotiating with four community colleges where police officers are able to do the theoretical part of their studies, followed by the practical, which will be done elsewhere. What we are looking at is the Cuban model, where you stay home, you go to your community college, you sit the police test to start, you do the antecedents, but you don't do the polygraph. But when you are finished after one semester, you get a certificate in security services, and then you can apply to enter into the police training. But rather than do you the six months, you may do three to four months, because it will be mainly practicals 
you will be doing having done all the theories already. The National Security Minister is also looking to upgrade another batch of district constables. Shamela Mitchell, TVJ News. Meanwhile, Minister Montague says the ministry is looking to widen the leadership pool within the JCF. He says the ministry is trying to get as many as 100 police officers to sign on to the Accelerated Promotions Program. Would have served a minimum of five years, what, regardless of your rank, between sergeant and constable, five years, you pass an exam, you have the aptitude, and you go into an accelerated program for 18 months, and you'll be ending up as a sergeant, and then after, I think, eight months, you will then move to become an inspector, and then you move up to be a deputy soon. The Northern Caribbean University, NCU, in Mandeville, Manchester, has joined the government in the fight against crime. NCU is introducing the Rescue 2020 initiative aimed at rescuing unattached youths across the island who may be involved in or are at risk of becoming involved in crime. TVJ's Vashan Brown reports. Member of Parliament for Central Manchester, Peter Bunting, has continued to speak about the country's crime problem. He says there is no direct correlation between poverty and violence. Therefore, he believes the cause of violence is due to the lack of values. He, however, adds that this can be corrected through character building in schools. This is really stepping in, stepping into that gap where perhaps family, social services, even some churches may have fallen down on the job in supporting young people that this initiative is going to provide a safety net, so to speak, and bring them back into the mainstream as productive citizens in our society. Associate Director of Community and Development Partnerships at Northern Caribbean University, Dr. Michael Harvey, stated that the Rescue 2020 initiative is aimed at combating the declining values and attitudes of youths in Jamaica. A large number, a large number of unattached youth who are underemployed, unemployable, living with a sense of hopelessness. As a result, some youth get involved in illegal activities to equal a living. He urged artists to use positive values in their music, as this, he argued, will help to win the minds of young people. Dr. Harvey added that a pilot program will be conducted in Manchester, which will involve mentoring, coaching, and community beautification. The goal and outcomes that we hope to accomplish from this is that we hope to see self empowered people, a desire for holistic education, higher self-esteem among our youth, greater personal satisfaction, significant reduction in crime and violence, greater respect for individuals and property, greater community involvement and synergy. He said that the pilot program will cost $39.6 million. However, the total cost of the Rescue 2020 initiative for the island is $114 million. Mr. Bunting expressed optimism about the initiative. I am very pleased to be associated with this initiative. I give it my full support and I look forward to hearing it grow and blossom and we see the benefits in a more peaceful a more just and a more productive society. Thank you. A week after pastor of the Faithful Word Baptist Church in Phoenix, Arizona, Stephen Anderson was denied entry to Jamaica. The debate continues about that decision. The controversial pastor was banned after an online petition by gay rights activist Jay John got nearly 40,000 supporting signatures to prevent his entry into the country. The issue has caused a controversial debate across the island, with two lawyers now weighing in on the issue. Speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica on Monday, attorney at law Abel Don Foote said Mr. Anderson should not have been banned from coming to Jamaica as the Jamaican constitution gives persons the right of freedom of speech. The highest form of legal authority in Jamaica is the constitution, mm -hmm. and essentially what it affords for in section 33C is the right for freedom of expression. Um, based on my understanding of what he is about and what he has said so far, I don't see necessarily um, 
any, any great exception that should be taken from his statements, because indeed he is somewhat justified by traditional principles. However, public defender Arlene Harrison Henry argues that Jamaica reserves the right to ban him. She bemoans, she bemoans the fact that the full details behind his ban was not published, but that the public was merely told he was banned because he was not conducive to the social climate of Jamaica. A sovereign state, as Jamaica is, is entitled to look at the circumstances of this gentleman and make a determination as to whether or not in the public interest, where there are issues of terrorism, where there are issues of the potential for breach of the public peace, as a sovereign state, the Pika would have the right to say no. And we go down to sports. Goal shooter Sabrina Spence added another Burja Elite League title to her netball collection to lead her Kingston Hummingbirds to their second title after dismissing the Manchester Spurs in a pulsating match inside the National Arena in Kingston. The Kingston Hummingbirds took the best of three series as they had already won game one. Trishana McGowan has our report. Race is not for the swift, but for those who can endure. That seemed to be the mode and mentality of the Kingston Hummingbirds as they upstaged the favorites, Manchester Spurs, 64-59, as the curtain came down on the fourth Berger Elite League netball season in dramatic fashion. Sabrina Spence is no stranger to victory, as she suited up for the St. Anne Orchids, who took the title last season. Spence led the Hummingbirds with another brilliant performance and was awarded match MVP for her 88% shooting accuracy, scoring 48 goals from 54 attempts. However, this was not without a fight as Spence struggled in the first two quarters. But what contributed to her performance? We spoke with our defenders and told them that they play hard, we play hard. So they get intercession, then we score to bring up the score. Despite being elated for the victory, Captain Paula Thompson voiced a few concerns she had in the campaign. Despite being elated for the victory, Captain Paula Thompson voiced a few concerns she had in the campaign. I'm feeling good about tonight's game because we really didn't want to come back and play another game on Saturday. But um, I think it was the league itself. The games were good. But um, I personally had that some challenges because we train at National Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and a Saturday. Then we play on a Tuesday and Thursday. So basically, we don't get any rest. When we look at the overseas professional leagues, they play just one match um, for the week. So maybe if we can look into that, then maybe it will be um, better for us. Thompson was not alone as the St. Anne Orchids assistant coach, Sean Murdoch, is also looking for improvement in next season's edition. What I want to see different next year is that we get the team early enough that we can have a good training session so we have to so we can build a team chemistry, build a rapport and have the ladies gelling the right way. We got them late and it was kind of a building building through the through the games. We're happy to attend it but we just want next year that we have time enough to have the ladies grow and, and synergize with each other. When the Burge Elite League campaign got going last December, Manchester Spurs were off to a flying start and remained consistent throughout the competition, losing only three matches prior to the finals, earning them the favorite tag. Many will ask what transpired and resulted in them not lifting the trophy. I thought we were doing well until the last um, few minutes in the game. And in addition to that, I thought we got some crucial calls that went against us, and that cost us the game today. But congrats to Hummingbirds nonetheless. I thought they played hard, and they're deserving of it. Meanwhile, the 2017 champions, St. Anne Orchids, who were 12 goals better than St. Catherine Racers, took third place with a 47-35 victory. Trishonda McGowan, TVJ Sports. And still on sports, the International Olympic Committee, IOC, <clears throat> excuse me, has refused a request for 15 Russian athletes and coaches to attend the 2018 Winter Olympics. The 13 athletes and two coaches were among 28 Russian athletes whose lifetime bans were overturned by the Swiss-based of, Court of Arbitration for Sports on Thursday. After the ruling, the Russian Olympic Committee requested that they be allowed to attend the Olympics, which is due to start in South Korea on Friday. In a statement issued Monday, the IOC said its interview review panel examined each application on a case-by-case -case basis and had lingering suspicions about potential anti-doping violations. 
And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon. <laughs>